What I liked was the idea that uh, behind the line, behind the line, there is a kind of truth. I'm, I'm going to start, Francois, by asking, um, and well, first of all, congratulating you on a film that we found truly beautiful and, in fact, deeply romantic uh, in its tone. Can I ask you uh, how you came to this, well, it's originally a play and uh, a film that was uh, a, a, a once, a, like, 1932 film by um, Ernst Lubitsch. Um, what was the starting point for you with this story? Um, I wanted to make a film about secrets and lies. And a friend of mine told me about uh, this play written in the 20s by a French uh, uh, writer, uh, Maurice Rostand, who is quite forgotten, who was the son of the Edmond Rostand, who wrote Cyrano de Bergerac, and who was very popular at this time. And I really enjoyed the, the play. I thought the, I was seduced by the idea of this uh, young French guy who goes to Germany to put some roses on the grave of a German soldat. So I was very touched and I began to work on the uh, adaptation and I realized Lubitsch made already an adaptation during the 30s, so I was very disappointed and a little bit depressed because I thought, how can I make a film after Lubitsch? And uh, so I watched the film of Lubitsch, Broken Lullaby, I really enjoyed it, but I realized the film was uh, uh, on the perspective of the French guy. And my idea was really to tell the story on the perspective of the loser of the war, of the German, and especially on the perspective of the, the, the German girl, Anna. So I realized my film will be quite different, and uh, it will be like an answer to Lubitsch, because Lubitsch, as an Austrian, made a film on the point of view of French character and I thought it could be interesting to make as a French director a film on a German on a G German character and that shift of perspective which is uh, very beautifully realized through the character of Anna and an amazing performance from um, Paula Beer Paula Can, Beer. Uh, thank you my Australian English pronunciation is always shocking um, can you uh, uh, tell us how you came uh, to involve her in in the film uh, we made a big casting in Germany. I didn't know the German young actresses, so it was a long uh, journey. But I was very, I was a little bit afraid and nervous because I didn't, I knew th the part would be very strong and uh, I needed someone uh, uh, very powerful to have the shoulders to, to make such a film. And uh, when I met Paula, I was really sedu uh, comment dire? Seduced, yes, I was seduced. She was, uh, she had some melancholy in the eyes and she was very mature. She was just 20 years old when I met her. And uh, so I asked her to come to Paris to make some tests with Pierre Ninet. And uh, the chemistry was perfect between the two, so I took the risk and I think it was a good risk. And, and the choice, uh, because we are, uh, always anticipating in your work uh, a sort of playfulness with the narrative and uh, a mischievousness. And uh, here the, the tone, as I said, is, is quite different, but we still, of course, find ourselves uh, in a world that is, is shifting in terms of its, our expectations of where it might take us. Uh, can, you, can you talk about that choice to kind of, uh, for her to go to, to France as well? Um, it, was a very, it was a big challenge. I didn't know how it will work, but uh, the challenge in the script was to have the twist in the middle of the film. Usually you have the twist at the end of the film. And this time uh, I wanted to, to try uh, this, uh, this experimentation about uh, the, the story. But uh, I, I, I decide really to build the script uh, with a mirror structure between France and Germany. And there are a lot of links between the, the two countries. So the idea was to, yes, to have this uh, construction en miroir, je sais pas comment on dit. A mirror construction? Yes. <laughs> And, uh, and can you tell us too about um, uh, the, the, the very bold uh, choices around uh, the black and white and then the shifts to color and, uh, and this approach? The film was not supposed to be in black and white, it was supposed to be in color. And uh, two weeks before the shooting, I realized all the, the, the places where we're supposed to, to shoot in X 
Jam uh, East Germany. Mm -hmm. They were, they were very good, but they were too, too colorful. You know, you had the feeling to be in a Walt Disney movie. <laughs> so uh, uh, walking in the street of Kedlingborg, this small street where we, we shot, I saw some pictures in black and white of the city and I realized nothing changed because actually the communists didn't have money to rebuild uh, the, the, the city. And uh, so I decided to put everything in black and white because I had the feeling it would be more easier for the audience to be involved in the story because all our memory of this period is in black and white. All the archives, all the documents about the, the, the First uh, World War e are in black and white. So I have the feeling it will be stronger to, to be really in this, in this story. And it's, it's, um, it's a period of mourning and it was difficult for me to imagine colors mm. Mm. Uh, in the story. And but I, did, I, I have some colors too. No, indeed. Um, can I ask you about, uh, you know, the idea of uh, this central character who is almost permanently absent in the film and uh, what that, uh, where, where that concept came from and how you uh, played with that in the, in the writing of the film? What do you want to know? Whatever you would <laughs> like to tell me. Um, for me, it was, it was obvious that all the story was built around France and uh, and the fact that the, the character is not there was was an opportunity to imagine to project many ideas and fantasy about uh, the character about the, the, the story between France and Adrien mm -hmm. and even between Anna and Adrien so that's it and, and did he did he sort of remain present and materialize for you in the in the in the process of actually creating it? It kind of feels like he's always there. I'm sorry, I, I don't even know if I'm actually asking an articulate question here. <laughs> but you had the impression that he was always present, that he appeared in Yes, it, it, it was. A, yes, it's a good question. We we ask ourselves: Do we have to show France or not in the flashback, which are lies? Uh, and for me, I realized, yes, it was important to, to have him on, on the screen mm. uh, because he's so important and all the story is built around him. So it was important, yes, to have him on the rally. Yeah. Yeah. Questions from the audience? Actually, it was a pleasure because I really love the German language. And uh, I wanted uh, for, actually it, it, it was a, a big challenge because uh, in France we don't like the German language, like in England I think, very often the German in, in French movies or English movies are Nazi all the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this time I wanted to give another vision about this language and on, on this country. So, so I work with very good German actors and I asked them to, to help me a lot for, for the dialogues to, because I'm not fluent in German, I'm able to, to have a conversation, but, uh, and they were very involved in, in the film, so it was, it was great to, to work with them. And actually the, the rhythm of German is quite close to the, to the French uh, rhythm and language, so it was quite easy for me. I, I think I had a good uh, ear for, for the German language. Um, we shot in 35 millimeters in color because it doesn't exist anymore uh, black and white in 35 millimeters. But uh, we had a lot of conversation with the DP, you know, to decide which scene will be in color and black and white. And actually, more scenes were supposed to be in color, but it's at the editing room that we decided what will be in color and black and white. So it was quite difficult because for the DP, you don't light the scenes in the same way when it's color in black and white. So for some scenes where he was a little bit afraid that I suddenly I changed everything and put in color some scenes. But at the end, actually, I didn't, uh, I didn't put so many scenes in, uh, in, uh, in, in color. But it was shot in color. And it was very strange for me because I was behind the camera. And when I was watching my actors, I saw them in color. And when suddenly I went to the monitor, I saw them in black and white and it was very strange feeling because I had the feeling to see an old movie by uh, Max Ophuls or by Dreyer or Bergman, so it was quite 
strange to have this uh, uh, une de mémoire de cinéphile. Enfin, ça réveillait une mémoire. A, a memory. It's, it's a sort of cinephile memory. This sort of remembering old films. I don't know how to answer. I think, I, yes, of course she's strong, but uh, what interested me was to show, uh, to make a kind of parallel between the two characters, between the French uh, character and the German character, and to show that she was able to, to mourn, mm -hmm. to mourn uh, better than him, and uh, to, to, to actually to show her strength in front of this situation, but she doesn't have lived the same Things than him, she was not uh, uh, touched by the war in her in her flesh like Adrien. So I wanted to to show uh, desynchro desynchronization desynchronization of uh, of the two characters, and uh, yes. Of course, it's deliberate, but that was, uh, that was a game with the audience. But uh, what I liked was the idea that uh, behind the line, behind the line, there is a kind of truth. And uh, when, you, when you see Adrien at the end of the film in his family, you, and you see he's totally important with Anna, you can think there is a kind of, uh, of truth in, uh, in his lie. That's what interested me. Alors, the car on the left, it's real. I was quite shocked when I saw that. I said, it's an English car. But uh, the, the people told me, enfin, the people working on the historic background told me it was usual at this time to have in France some uh, car uh, drived on the, on the left. And but I, I, I think, <laughs> no, I think oh, there is another question that uh, maybe you don't want yes. to answer about Europe. <laughs> no, ab ab about the background and uh, yes, of course, I, I realize making the film there are a lot of resonances with today about the rise of nationalism in Europe. And uh, uh, w w w when, I, when I talked to, to my producer, I wanted to make this film. They said to me, uh, once again, a film about the World War I, it's, people are bored about that, especially in France. But I had the feeling the, the, the film could be uh, original in the fact it's told on the, on the side of the German. And usually, usually you see the war in, in, uh, on the side of the winners of the war. And the second thing, I had the, the feeling, yes, there are many resonance, re resonances with today, with uh, what happens today in Europe, with, uh, with some politics asking from uh, a return to borders, with the fear of migrants, of, uh, of foreigners. I didn't know the Brexit will happen, but uh, I don't know if it's a good thing for me today for the promotion of the film, but uh, 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 I, I, I had the feeling that, that the film could talk about the situation of today, and, and uh, that's what interested me, and I did a lot of research about the situation of Germany just after the, the First World War, yes. I think one of the things that is so palpable in the film and so wonderful that we get this mirror image of uh, his experience as an outsider in Germany and yes. her experience going into, and it's quite shocking actually when she goes to, to France. Yes, I wrote the, the script just after the terrorist attacks in France, you know, uh, about Charlie. And, uh, and in France, we heard a lot of La Marseillaise. And, uh, and I wanted really to, to, to hear this song in the real historical context of, uh, of, uh, of, the, um, of the, the, the situation. And I wanted that, that the French hear the lyrics of the song, which are very violent, with the air of a German ca character. It was important for me. And, uh, That's why I, I, uh, there is the Die Wart am Rhein, the national uh, German song at this time, too. Um, in fact, it, actually, it comes from the play. In the play, there is a reference to a painting by Gustave Courbet about um, a, car, uh, a personage. Uh, avec la tête en arrière. With a character with holding with the head backwards. So I looked for this painting and when I discovered it it was very romantic 
and it was not the idea I've got with uh, f for the painting. So I, I shoot, I, I, I try to find something more violent, and I discovered this uh, this painting by Manet, which was which which is beautiful and very modern. I didn't know it, like many people, because it's very rare. And uh, it was exactly what I wanted to show, and I wanted to show in two times, in black and white, and because it's an uh, impressionism painting, you don't really see uh, first exactly wh what is the painting, and I wanted to show it in colors at the end of the film to show the, the violence and the blood on the, on the white shirt. And uh, for me, it was like a symbol of all this story, and it was important to show at the end that uh, Anna has a kind of distance with, with the painting and the paradox that she's able to say, I, now I want to leave, and it gives me the strength to, 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 to leave. For me, it's an happy ending. I think uh, Anna is able to turn the page with all this story, and she's young and beautiful, and she has a new life in front of her. She has learned a lot. And uh, no, I'm optimist for her, but there is a kind of paradox because she's in front of this painting. But I think for me, she's able now to have a kind of distance with this, uh, this, with this painting and with this story. And she has understood that maybe France and Adrien were not uh, the right person for her. And uh, I think in France too, she will be happy. I hope so. <laughs> And, and in France, we are happy. Thank you very much, Thank you. Francois, for being here.